Avignon is called the City of the Popes because it was home to seven pontiffs from 1309 to 1377. Rival popes coexisted in Rome, but those in Avignon were determined to prove their superiority. One way they achieved this was by spending a lot of money on grand architectural gestures. The palace is extraordinary. Built in 1335, it is the largest Gothic palace in the world. With 15,000 square meters of floor space, it is equivalent in size to four Gothic cathedrals. Using a picture captured from the internet as a backdrop, I have posted pictures of the main features of the impressive facade. The left side of the main facade is marked by an elegant five-sided tower. The entrance portal is marked by two graceful towers with hook-like spires over it. The 14th century Palace of the Popes, one of the largest Gothic buildings in Europe, is protected by walls up to 18 feet thick, which made it impossible for enemies to penetrate. Above the entrance way is the coat of arms of Pope Clement VI, a blue stripe and red roses on a silver ground. As we entered the palace, we were asked to wait at the Hall of the Petit Audience. This is where the so-called contradictions or minor cases arising during the trials were heard and judged. The vaulted ceilings are covered with frescoes depicting military trophies and standards with Latin inscriptions. The ribbon is painted to suggest imitation marble. This painting shows the Archbishop of Avignon praying for his city of Torrascon, struck by the plague in 1721. The honor square was built by the Pope Clement VI in the place of the previous square of the councils. It is enclosed by the buildings of the new palace. This huge hall is one of the most significant in the whole palace. Nowadays, the consistory no longer has the great importance it had in the 14th century, when it was the supreme council and supreme court of all Christendom.
The Grand Tinel Hall has six huge vaulted windows overlooking the garden. Originally, the ceiling was decorated with gold stars. But the Great Fire of 1413, which destroyed the frescoes in the Hall of the Consistory, also destroyed this one. The Pope's meals were prepared and kept hot in this fireplace. Clement VI's great square kitchen, covered by pyramidal vaulting, is one of the most unusual rooms in the palace. Its outstanding feature is a soaring chimney shaped like an upside-down funnel. The shape of the kitchen and its monumentality reiterate the fortress-like aspect of the palace. The antechamber served for private audiences, and it designated a threshold between public and private spaces. The Pope's bed chamber is located in the center of the Great Tower. It's a square-shaped room with a corner fireplace and two windows. The flooring of this room was recovered with painted tiles imitating the 14th century originals. The Deer Room is a tiny square-shaped room frescoed with a profane subject, one of which was very much in fashion during that period, the hunt. The Norse Sacristy, also known as the Pope's Sacristy, is reached by way of the Grand Chapel. Irregularly shaped with a pointed arch ceiling, it is full of casts of statues of kings and cardinals. These are close-up pictures of Emperor Charles IV and the Duke of Burgundy. This imposing hall was originally called the New Chapel. The architecture in the finest southern French Gothic style features seven bays covered by ribbed vaulting and four huge windows. On one side of the hall is a reconstruction of the altar on which Clement VI celebrated the All Saints Mass in 1352. An exhibition of modern and contemporary art is being showcased in this hall. The Pope bestowed his triple blessing on the crowd assembled in the palace square from this window, although the one we see today is a 20th century replica of the original. Also, this is where the Pope received the papal tiara on his coronation day. The view from this famous window. The portal leading to the Great Chapel still preserves its original beauty, mostly a result of a superb sculptural decoration. Then it was time to say goodbye to the Pope's Palace as our visit came to an end.
Then it was time to enjoy the facades of monuments and buildings surrounding the palace square. Opposite the Palace of the Pope is the elaborate Baroque facade of the Mint Building, erected in 1619 to house the papal legation of Cardinal Scipioni Borghese, whose coat of arms with dragons and eagles is visible on the exterior. The contrast between the building's overall austere look, in truth almost military, and the elaborately decorated facade with the dashing eagles along the cornice is quite striking. The building's name comes from the fact that it is much smaller than the nearby Palace of the Popes. It was erected in 1317. The origins of the church are quite obscure, although the building is believed to date back to the 4th century. In 1859, a gilded statue of the Virgin was placed on the top of the square-shaped bell tower, 127 feet high. The exterior is adorned with numerous works of art. The haunting Calvary on the churchyard is a sculptural group executed in 1819 by Basson. <laughs> 